It's loud and clear. Good. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, and I want to make one thing clear. I'm, uh, this is not hyperbole. I'm, I'm not trying to stir the pot or get attention or any of that. This is a real deal. And what we're talking about here today is there's now a, a clear plan and it's supposed to be completed in May of 2024. We've talked about this, but we didn't have the big picture. We have the big picture. We have really great information in this and a lot of ways of how you can stop it. What we're talking about here is basically, you remember all the talk about the New World Order. If you've been going down any rabbit holes, you know that everything that's transpired over the last hundred and hundreds of years, but especially the last decades, was pointing towards a one world government, a centralized government in, in the hands of a very few people controlling everything. And this always seemed like a movie plot to people, and they didn't, they didn't really want to uh, agree with that, understand that, or think about that. But now we have it. And we always wondered what was going to be the organization through which this is going to be passed. And just a few weeks, uh, Christine and I were part of a very, very uh, great meeting over two and a half days um, at, at, at our new friend's house. And, and he brought in some very influential freedom and truth speakers, uh, action takers, just a great group. And one gentleman uh, that we're going to have on too, and he's been in this sphere for a very, very long time, a very influential guy, very, very well known. He said something that we knew, but now now it's coming full circle. He said the the control for the soul and the body and the mind of mankind is coming through healthcare. And here's the thing. We're talking about the pandemic treaty and the new international health regulations that the WHO assembly is currently negotiating. They're in a final stage of negotiating. Now listen to this. I want you to get the full picture. What do you know? What treaty, what agreement do you know of that the whole world agrees on? I know we have the treaty, the Antarctica treaty, Antarctica treaty that uh, everybody agrees on. 194 nations, quite a few of which are currently at war with each other, are all on board with these new amendments and this new pandemic accord. But what does it really mean? I want to break this down for you because um, we can and we will stop this. So they have been negotiating. Last year, the United States proposed under, under this administration, proposed amendments to the current international health regulations. And it got too much attention. So that was struck down. But these same amendments were simply transported over to some smaller nations that nobody really knows about. And now they have submitted those amendments to the international health regulations. And now currently the, the uh, World Health Organization's World Assembly, they're in Geneva until the 30th of May. They're finalizing this draft and they're finalizing the treaty and they're finalizing the amendments to the international health regulations. And we need to break it down because once you understand what is happening, you can transport the message and you can get active on it. The, 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 the greatest problem is the amendments to the existing international health regulations. The existing uh, international health regulations are a set of guidelines that all member nations of the WHO, the World Health Organization, agree to adhere to voluntarily, right? These are things that have been implemented over the last 20, 30 years, and uh, they are trickling down into every nation's healthcare system. They were voluntary so far, and they were uh, on, a, on an advisory basis. These 300 amendments to these international health regulations change everything. It starts by, these are not non-binding, but binding regulations. It means literally that the nations have to legally adhere to these new rules. They've taken out the dignity, human rights, freedom of expression. They've taken out a lot of what, can, what, what represents informed consent. Why is this a problem? Here's the scenario that I see playing out probably even this year by the 
by fall, winter of this year, we're going to see the following. Because they're going to do a dry run. They're going to do a test run for this. They will come out with a new pandemic health scare, virus scare, something that is similar to what we're seeing with COVID, but it probably will be a bigger scare. They're going to go harder, right? Um, for two reasons. First of all, we're, we're now seeing a serious call by many people for real, um, a, a real investigation, not just an investigation, but kind of a reconciliation and justice period for everything that's happened during COVID, for the crimes against humanity. This is coming to a pinnacle soon. So they're going to have to bring something in that's going to keep everyone's attention away from that. And that's going to be, in my opinion, this is my humble opinion, it's going to be a new scare. And they're going to test all these new amendments to the international health regulations. And they're going to run a test run with the nations. And then they're going to say to everybody, you see why this is so important. We need to vote yes on these new amendments in May of 2024. These, when this is complete in May of 2024, and most of the integral part of the of these in, in international health regulations won't need the approval of a president, prime minister, or a congress, or any or a parliament, or any other government body. They're sending delegates to Geneva. They say aye, and the whole deal is done because the international health regulations are already in place. They're just changing them a little bit. This is literally the new world order. They are literally un, they're, they're, they're basically deleting every nation's constitution. They're deleting national law. And through international health regulations, they're bringing in a new world order. And here's what they're going to do. They're going to put uh, us under a perpetual state of a health emergency. Because under these new amendments, the World Health Organization has the right to uh, simply say we could see a health emergency coming, we're putting everyone under emergency alert. Here's what you need to do. Lockdown, um, test, uh, and they can do it. They have, with these new amendments and with the new pandemic treaty, they will have jurisdiction over the soil, over animals, over humans, over the air. This is full on new world order. This is what this is. And this is why I didn't want to do it on the open platform yet, because I want first, uh, what, we're, what, what we want to make sure here is what we're saying, we have one year, one year to wage war against the World Health Organization. I'm sorry, I don't, I, I know none of us like this language, none of us like this thought. But at the same time that we are creating a beautiful vision and that we need to be invested in the vision, we need to be invested in self-reliance and personal responsibility, but we must walk and chew gum at the same time here. This is the clear path now. This is the enemy. It's coming out of the shadows. This is it. The, the new world order is going to be implemented or is planned to be implemented through the World Health Organization. It is now absolutely and abundantly clear. Thankfully, we have a wealth of information and, and I'm going to share with you where you need to look to get your best information. We've done the research. This is your best information. Uh, go over to James Roguski's Substack. Let me here. Here is the first, and you can access it uh, through different um, uh, uh, domains. You can go to StopTheWho.com. You can go to JamesRoguski.Substack.com. James Roguski, we had him on. We'll have him on again. We we're, we're talked to him in a newsroom. This is the guy that is twenty four seven on this subject everything there is to know. He he reads every line, every comma, every period, everything, every paragraph. He knows everything there is to know about the World Health Organization. And I uh, subscribe to his Substack, read it. He has tools. He's given us wonderfully. And, and I want to make sure that you know this. He put his phone number here. Let me see if you can see. He put his phone number here. He put his email address here. And you can literally call him up and you can talk to him. You can ask him how you can help. And he is picking up or calling you back or texting you back. I've done it. I've tried it. That's just how James is. He is doing a fantastic job. I encourage you to call him if you are inspired to help with this. But he's putting out so much content on his Substack that will help all of us do the right things here. Let me show you this. Um, there's another, another uh, sub page of his Substack that I encourage you to use today. 
uh, it's this, no, this one here. And here we go. So what he put up in this article are, uh, and I'm going to pull it up for you, the delegates. Here we go. I hope you can see it. Um, no, I need to change the screen. My apologies. Uh, it's not cooperating quite so beautifully. Here we have it, the delegates. So he said, who are these people that are negotiating on our behalf in Geneva, Switzerland with the World Health Organization and 194 nations unanimously? They, they don't have a dispute. They're fighting apparently a war in the Ukraine. They are fighting over God knows how many resources. There's God knows how many wars going on, but no. In Geneva, they're all friends. They all agree on this. It's absolutely ridiculous because this is the new world order, friends. I'm telling you. And down here, he's bringing the whole list of people who are the chief delegates for the United States, who are the, who are the alternates. And he put in all the email addresses, the advisors. I mean, just a comprehensive list of people you can email, you can get in touch with, you can tell your friends about. You have internationally, see, all the email addresses are here. You have also... Australia's delegates, Barbados, Canada, Denmark, Estonia. And he's going to complete this list, I'm sure, because this guy is thorough. But we need to get all hands on deck. We need to get on this. There are internal things that we need to do, and they're, they're very important. And this is a spiritual battle. But there is now an enemy that has come out on stage and said, we're going to be the ones who are going to usher in the new world order digital health certificates, mandatory vaccinations, mandatory medical procedures, um, lockdowns, climate lockdowns. You won't be, they, they will restrict your movement, restrict your, your usage of car, electricity, water, meat, dairy, everything. It, this is not a theory anymore, friends. I can't stress this enough. It's not hyperbole. It's also not exaggeration and not fear mongering. This is what they put out in writing every day and these all these 194 member nations are on board we need to stop this we need to exit the who and i know people are saying it's not constitutional and it doesn't apply it doesn't matter how many of the things we've experienced over the last three years weren't constitutional so what who cared they did not care they went full steam with this and they'll continue to 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 go full steam um they continue to go full steam ahead with this. Sorry, I was just reading a comment here. But James Rogowski, uh, Congresswoman Michelle Bachman, he, she's in Geneva right now. They all need our help. We need all hands on deck. This needs to be an absolute force multiplier. Everybody needs to know about this. We have one year left, but I think we only have a few months left until another emergency hits the airwaves and we're going to have a hard time getting people's attention because they're going to be looking at this new emergency, whatever. Now is the period. Now is the period. This is COVID-19 bullshit on steroids if they go through with this. On steroids. I'm not saying that we will participate in it. I'm not saying that, that there isn't a way out afterwards, but that's all-out war later. And we don't want all-out war. When I say we're waging war on the WHO, I mean it in with all the peaceful tools at our disposal, Right. Every, every way that we can possibly communicate and make the message clear. If we need to march in the streets, if, that, if it comes to that, sure, we'll do it. We're, we will march for freedom. We will march um, to, to represent and affirm in front of the world that we are sovereign, free beings. And we will point to the entities and people who want to take that away from you by force. We will not. We will not fight them with weapons. No, 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 no. It's not what we're going to do. We're going to do it like the spiritually evolved beings that we are. But we need to understand this. This is war. This is war. And you, you need to find your place in this war. Whether you are a general, a colonel, a lieutenant, a soldier, it doesn't matter where you see your, where you see your position as long as you find your spot on the battlefield and you stand firm in it. And sometimes we need this kind of clarity. This is clarity. This is the one thing I see right now that combined with CBDCs and combined with AI, this is a force to be reckoned with. Ultimately, the human spirit is stronger. The human spirit will prevail if we fully activate it within us. And this is what we need to do. We need to activate the human spirit fully. You need to make that connection with the creator. And, and that needs to be the priority number one every day. Every morning you get up, 
make sure you connect, make sure you charge, make sure you fully allow this creative force to come into you, this beautiful power of pure love, of pure creation. And with that, you apply that to your life. And then you go, and we need human agency. We need human activism. We have one year, one year. And there will be no voting. There will be no Congress approval. There will be no presidential sign off on this. Anonymous delegates, unless we make them famous, will say, I, I, and they'll just show a hands and they'll vote on it and it'll be through. And then because of the Nash, the infiltration of all these national governments, they will have willing participants in the nations who will implement it, but it won't take years. They've, they're already doing this, right? So this is what we need to do right now. Go to James Roguski's Substack. Go to stop the who.com. This is your one-stop shop for all information. Help James become a volunteer, spread the message, send this to your friends, share, do a text thread, a signal, or WhatsApp, Telegram, wherever, whenever, what it doesn't matter. Please become a, a, a partner in this uh in this fight, in this journey, in this battle. We need all hands on deck. We're gonna amplify this message, we're gonna bring people on, we're gonna spread this awareness, but my intention is, and James' intention is, that in the next weeks and months, we make this such a known subject. We need memes. We need videos. We need uh, conversations at the dinner table. We need conversations in the coffee shop. We need conversations at the grocery store. We need conversations with city councils. We need conversations at the state level. Make sure that your state representatives know this. Make sure that your governor knows this. Better yet, Urge your governor and your uh, your government in your state to pass laws that will basically leave the WHO outside of your state. Make sure they cannot enter your state. We ultimately, in the United States, we have a state-based system. We have a constitution that clearly uh, uh, says that. And I know it sounds almost cynical at, at this time, or, or what's the other word? It's like naive, but it's not really naivete. We need to use all tools at our disposal, please. This is what all this work, all the spiritual development, all the inner work is for. It is so we can apply it in, in real life practically. If not, it's not worth very much. And I'm not afraid of the WHO. I'm not afraid of these delegates. I'm not afraid of the international health regulations or the pandemic treaty. But I have a clear vision into the future, and it does not include dictatorship, and it does not include us fighting decades of wars against these entities. That's not what's included. So let's stop this now in its tracks. Let's stop it. Go talk to James Ruguski. Go look at his suggestions. Email every delegate. Put them on an email list. Make sure that everybody individually that you know emails them. Make sure that everybody writes a letter. Make sure they call and blow up their phones. Make sure they blow up the representatives' phones. Use all these tools. Let them know. Exit the WHO. We have a momentum with this whole debt ceiling discussion that's going on. Actually urge the speaker, Mr. McCarthy, urge him to say, exit the WHO or no deal. No, no debt ceiling discussions until we say, stop the who, exit this organization. Then we'll continue negotiations final negotiations about the debt ceiling. Use every leverage there is in every discussion. All right. So um, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm going to go through your uh, comments here in a little bit. We put the uh, link here in the video, in the live stream description. Somebody sharing the sub stack here. Please continue to share it. We will not make this a fear-based um, battle. We will make this a spirit and love based battle. I know this. And we're going to bring this everywhere. I'm going to I'm going to talk about this everywhere I go. I promise you this. Because all the food forests, all the off the grid self-reliance, personal uh, responsibility movements and beautiful things, we can't just leave and let this place burn down. We got to do everything we can to do both things at the same time. Create this new vision and show up for the battles that need to be fought here. And they will have to be fought. 
there's just no way around it. We've let this come so far because of our because of our apathy and ignorance, collectively speaking, because we were uh, so concerned with our comfort, we were so concerned with our personal lives, with our traumas, and our. I understand all of it. I'm not passing judgment. We're all we all have our stories, but now we need to get on the fast track here. And I'm really the reason why Christine and I are so passionate about building this community, about having this beautiful tribe of people is because we know we can't do these things alone, right? We just spend a few days and, and are continuing to spend uh, some time with the wonderful Dr. Christian Northrup. And we're spending time with dear friends and we all see, we currently need all hands on deck. We've come so far. We've done so much together. Not me, not together, collectively. Believe it or not, every time you talk about it, you think about it, you share it, you comment on something, you bring out the message or you bring it to your dinner table. Every time something happens, especially when it comes from the spirited place inside of you, not the angry, not the fearful one, but the spirited place. And you just go, I am a pure human spirit. I'm here to express freedom, love, compassion, unity. And here, by the way, here are some really dark entities that are trying to destroy all of it. And we're not going to have it. We aren't going to have it. So let's do this together. James Roguski, despite everything, he's a very intelligent man. He has a kind of a natural positivity, even though he's warning against these things. So please, let's do this together. Let's stop the WHO. Let's shift over to this beautiful vision of freedom and unity. Let's do it hand in hand. Let's chew and walk gum. Uh, uh, walk and chew gum for a while here. Uh, we have literally, we have a year left, but I'm going to say start today because if we can get the attention to this subject, to the masses, which I think we can, the masses are open to it. We just need to do it in the right way. Then we can, and we will stop this. Okay. It's not going to happen. Mark my words. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. We have a different vision, a different future. And we will stop this. Are you with me? Are you with us? Let's do this together. We're all equally important in this. We're not somewhere up on a pedestal. We're not somewhere. We're, we're not special. Or we're all special. Let's put it that way. You, me, everybody. We're all special. We have unique talents, unique abilities, unique expressions, unique creativity. And it requires all of us. All right. Uh, friends, thank you for, for tuning in. Thank you for being here. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for making that connection. Please share this. It's May 19th, 2023. Thank you for joining us today. We've got a big broadcast lined up for you. Everything we do is about human empowerment and building a pro-human future. The globalists hate humanity and are building an anti-human future. And I've told you for decades that once the people of Earth understand that the globalists are anti-human, and are working against us, none of their plans will succeed once the population understands that. So you can say what you want about Elon Musk, but him coming out just a few days ago on CNBC and saying, George Soros hates humanity and wants to destroy civilization was a totally true statement. That's what the environmental movement is. It has nothing to do with the earth or what's good for the planet. They're the ones involved in all the genetic engineering and all the chem trailing and the, the nuclear testing and all of it. And whether Elon Musk is good or bad, he realizes that humanity is shifting towards this and that the tide is in our favor. It was Julius Caesar that famously said, there is a tide in the affairs of men when taken at the flood leads on to fortune. Our fortune is not Hollywood and palaces and all this crap, but freedom and liberty and an open competitive society that empowers the individual and through that empowers the masses. So today, I want to talk about some big issues with you here in the first few segments and really ask you, what future do you want? It's been said many times that humanity is at a crossroads, and we're always at a crossroads. We're always at a key point of decisions we have to make. But historically, this point we're at, I don't think anybody denies, is the greatest crossroads our species has ever come upon. And I have to just give nothing but kudos to the general population that we see really learning what's going on at an accelerated curve. And that's why the establishment is so panicked, because they want to control the future. They greedily want to dominate 
the decisions that are being made and the future destiny, the future evolution, in their words, of our species. I want that to be dictated by us, we the people, not by them. So there's a great battle taking place all around us to decide that. And remember, decades ago, they denied Bilderberg existed and that there were globalist cabals. In fact, a few years ago, they said it didn't exist. The ADL said people should be arrested to even say it exists. But yesterday, Fox News, CBS, CNBC, all admitting global government, the elite secretly meet to save you from the AI that they're launching against us. So when we sit back and look at what's happening, the human smuggling, the enslavement, the fentanyl, the, the annihilation of the border, the beginning of World War III in Ukraine, all these horrible things that are going on, the transgenderism, the sterilization of our children. When we look at that, we sit back and we say, why is this happening? Because the globalists want power over life and death. They want to be able to play God. They've decided there's too many of us. And quite frankly, there are a lot of aimless people. There are a lot of dumb people. There are a lot of lazy people. Hell, I'm one of them half the time. But they can't play God. So I hate to quote... Marvel Comics or DC Comics or whatever it was, but the first Man of Steel of the new remake with the new Superman that came out like eight, nine years ago was so powerful at the beginning because Superman's dad is the chief scientist and he's there confronting General Zod, the head general, who has just wiped out the elite of the planet. And he says, they're degenerate, they're inbred, they're scum, and we've got to wipe everybody else out. As Superman's dad says, okay, Zod, you're going to decide who we kill? And Zod kind of looks down and realizes, yeah, I'm degenerate too. So humanity's not going to make it through this by killing billions of people. In fact, once this starts, and it's already begun, humans will rally, and humans will fight, and we'll have a war or a group of wars, probably between Pakistan and India, or China and India is probably where it'll start, not, not in Ukraine. Most numbers and actuaries show that, and I agree with it. And, and, and then billions will die, and the globalists will not maintain control. They've deluded themselves because they've had crisis management for so long where they create crises or they exacerbate crises, and then they use those problems to get more power and control. That works until you reach a threshold point. And I think anybody, knows we've reached that point. So I've had a lot of guests on, a lot of people on, and even mainline commentary from even people on Fox News are saying the FBI are traitors and we need to arrest all the FBI and we need to do all this stuff. And, and, and yes, the leadership of the FBI should be arrested. And yes, the Justice Department is captured and, and it war the American people. But most of the government, and I'm not lauding the government, I just know because I've studied it, is actually awake and upset about what's happening, just like the public. So what I'm saying here is we don't want a civil war with the government. The government is just an infrastructure we built. The globalists are trying to destroy that, defund the police, annihilate the dollar, get rid of the borders. We need to take back our government through ideology and ideas and, and, and lawsuits and, and criminal charges and bring those that are guilty to justice, but we're being tricked and manipulated into a civil war to believe the federal government is our enemy. Ladies and gentlemen, the federal government's way too big, it's out of control, a bunch of it's unconstitutional, they just hired 87,000 IRS agents. Believe me, I, I get it. But there are very dark forces, just like with the race war. There are whites that are bad, there are blacks that are bad. The liberals have basically weaponized the culture and, and, and trained a lot of blacks to believe that whites deserve to be attacked and there's 20 to one attacks on whites by blacks, and the ADL tries to cover that up. That's all true, and the FBI covers it up. But what I'm saying is, do we really think, at the end of the day, the race war there started is really about white people or black people? No, it's about the globalists manipulating us. What I'm saying is, the race war they've started is very real. The federal government being captured out of control is very real. But we've got to be above that and see the larger picture rather than trying to tear the country apart and not get baited into this, not get manipulated into violence, because people are angry. And they're upset, and they, they think the right thing to do is to attack. But you need to attack through information. The Pentagon will tell you, and they're right on this, that in World War II, 60, 70% of war was information. And by Vietnam, they said it was 80%. And by Desert Storm One and Two, it was 90%, 95%. Folks, it's 99% information now. So all of you that want violence, 
need to understand that if you don't put your energy into the information war to affect things and expose things and peacefully resist now, are you really gonna go around and kill people if an open war starts? And, and what are you gonna kill, the cops, the military? They're being ordered to do this. And I'm not saying they come and take you to a camp or forcibly inject you or try to kill you that you shouldn't defend yourself, but that doesn't hurt the new world order. Exposing the Bilderberg Group, exposing the globalists, exposing their operations, exposing BlackRock. We've got 20 states right now pulling out of BlackRock and saying we're not going to do SEGs, UN control of our policies, and, 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 and cutting off our energy. We're having devastating victories. We had that hearings two months ago that, that admit the deep state censoring and surveilling Americans and all the criminalities coming out. I'm going to play clips in a moment, just of Matt Gates's portion where he brings forward these FBI agents and whistleblowers that are exposing that there were feds inside January 6th basically running the attack. We're winning the information war right now. That's why our enemy has the federal provocateur patriot front out there. The ADL's been caught funding and, and supporting groups like that. That's why they're so desperate for this fight. So for me, it's not some wimpy thing like, I don't want a physical war because I'm not a tough guy. Come on, folks. I put my skin in the game for 29 years, and I get on the front lines of this info war. I know the answer is exposing their policies and their ideas and being like Mahatma Gandhi, who was copying Christ, and Martin Luther King Jr. There were maybe 50,000 British troops and 500 million Indians when Mahatma Gandhi peacefully simply stood up to what they were doing and stood up against their unconstitutional taxes. Famously, Indians had to buy salt for their food from the government. They'd put you in jail for five years. If they caught you going to the ocean in India, large part of what's in the ocean, the Indian Ocean, part of the Pacific Ocean, if they caught you going to the sea, you know the rocks at the sea and there's you know, crystals all over it, you pick it up. If they caught you five years in prison, no ifs, ands, or buts, he marched with 50 people, then 100 people, as he went towards the sea from the north of India out to the coast, and by the time he got there, he had millions of people with him, and they all sat there and they gathered salt and said, F you, British Empire. And it was over. Now they went up to him with clubs and they split his head open and they beat a lot of people to death. But everybody saw that. So see, it takes Christ-like power to not be violent when the enemy wants it, but to sit there and take it, because then that proves they're wrong. That's what I'm saying. So we're going to go to this Matt Gates clip. I noticed this was big news yesterday, but the audio was bad. We're trying to boost the audio when the FBI agents are speaking for a reason. The audio wasn't good. I'm going to come back with some final comments, but this is a historic moment we're all involved in. And let's have the eye of the tiger, but let be as peaceful as doves and wise as serpents. The FBI has been victimized by political capture, and that politicization has manifested in the targeting of Americans who never deserve to have this government weaponized against them. Whistleblowers saw those bad acts. They stepped forward, and they were retaliated against and crushed as a consequence. And our work today will build on the work of Special Counsel Durham, who said recently that at the FBI there is confirmation bias, an overwillingness to rely on information from individuals connected to political opponents and action without appropriate objectivity. Uh, there, uh, one of the whistleblowers we'll hear from today served in the United States Marine Corps, served as a local cop, Garrett O'Boyle, and uh, this is uh, his testimony regarding that political capture. Do you believe that the FBI has become political? I do. I think most people out in the field um, trying to avoid that politicization of of the agency, which I, which is good, but it's gotten to a point. It seems to me that I don't know, it's 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 like a cancerous point where the FBI has let itself become enveloped in this politicization and weaponization that I don't know how uh, to to even begin to to fix it. One group that saw that weaponization work against them were Catholics. The FBI 
Field office in Richmond put out a memo saying that violent extremists would find the Catholic ideology attractive and would attempt to connect with Catholic adherents, that extremists uh, would show an interest in Catholic congregations over the next 12 to 24 months leading up to the presidential election. Isn't that an interesting coincidence? And the memo calls for the FBI to develop sources with Catholic congregations uh, to try to obtain information about those folks. Another group that saw weaponization turn against them, parents who attended school board meetings. Uh, you'll hear today from Steve Friend, who worked for the FBI and actually found himself ridiculed at his own FBI office because he, too, was a parent who attended a school board meeting. This is Steve Friend. Given your law enforcement background, does knowing that you could be investigated by the FBI for speaking up at your child's school board meeting chill parents from exercising their First Amendment rights? Yes. And you said you had attended a school board meeting and you were nervous that you could be under federal investigation. Is that correct? Yes, my colleagues teased me about it. Americans who were in Washington, D.C. on January 6th who committed no crimes, who simply attended a rally, also saw the FBI weaponized against them. George Hill was an FBI uh, employee working out of the Boston field office, and he talks about the pressure that the Washington field office was putting on Boston, and when they tried to get predicate evidence, they couldn't get it for a very interesting reason. This is George Hill. Joe Bonavolanta said, no, we're not opening up cases on people who went to a rally. And I forgot a key part. The SSA for CT2 said, happy to do it. Show us where they were inside the Capitol and we'll look into it. To which WFO said, we can't show you those videos unless you can tell us the exact time and place those individuals were inside the Capitol. To which the SSA responded back, and I was privy to these conversations firsthand. Why can't you show us? Why can't you just send us, the, give us access to the 11,000 hours of video of this exam that's available? Because there may be, may be UCs, undercover officers, or CHS's confidential human, for, confidential human sources on those videos whose identity we need to protect. Marcus Allen, an FBI analyst who did work around evidence, sharing it with folks, he saw videos that concerned him about the federal government's own involvement in January 6. Here's Marcus Allen. The video to me indicated uh, uh, potential problems uh, with the uh, investigation as far as informants uh, were concerned and uh, our organizations. Uh, potential forthrightness about utilization of informants there on that day that might have some impact on our cases um, and the you know the subjects that we're looking up and then just a general awareness overall for the investigation as a whole that there might have been some kind of uh, potential federal involvement with the activities on January 6th and I thought it was important enough that it like wanted our attention. So much of the good work happening at the FBI is throughout this country, and a lot of the rot the committee has learned emerges out of headquarters and out of the Washington field office. Garrett O'Boyle described the conflict that existed as the Washington field office put pressure on other field offices around the country to engage in law enforcement work without predication. This is Mr. O'Boyle. Did the WFO pressure? Other field offices to keep January 6th cases open or open cases? I would say they pressured, um, pressured us to open cases uh, to some degree. Um, one example that I have personally, I, I made this, this is one of my protective disclosures, so I'll just touch on it a little bit. But um, I received a lead about someone based on an anonymous tip and in law enforcement, anonymous tips don't hold very much weight, especially without evidence that you can corroborate uh, pretty easily. I wasn't able to co corroborate anything they said. Um, even after speaking with uh, the person they alleged potential criminal behavior of. While I'm trying to figure all that out, I get another lead from the same agent who sent me that lead. And um, they've essentially tried to get me to violate policy or law.
trying to get people to break the law without sufficient predication is a weaponization of our government. And all Americans suffer when resources are misallocated, when stats are padded following 9-11. The FBI set up all of these terrorism entities to look outward at people abroad who might seek to harm our country. But a lot of those authorities were turned inward against our own people, and the result was stat padding for the purpose of FBI officials trying to convince Congress that the violent extremism threat was more enhanced than it indeed was, and we got critical testimony on that point also from Mr. O'Boyle. As a DT agent, I encountered similar um, stat padding or case bolstering. Truth be told, it was one case, like, but the FBI had me open up four different cases uh, because they had me open a case for every individual that I had a um, articulable factual basis that there may have been um, potential federal law being violated. Where like on a criminal case, say you're working like a gang, which is this case was I guess like a militia. Um, if you're working like a gang, you have a case open on a gang and you have a subfile for each person in it, like. It, you, know, you know, John Doe 1, 2, and 3, they all have their own subfile. Or in my case, John Doe 1, 2, 3, and 4 all had their own separate case because then the FBI can, from my perspective, <laughs> the FBI can come back to Congress and say, look at all the domestic terrorism we've investigated. But really, I was working one case. But the FBI can then say, well, he actually had four. And so we, you know, we need to give us more money because look at how big of a threat all this domestic terrorism is. So a lot of positive things are happening right now, and a lot of people are coming forward. And we need to understand that the globalists have written so many books and so many white papers saying, we're gonna control the leaders of nations, we're gonna have them do all these horrible things, then we're gonna blame the leaders and the governments to bring them down. But something's happened. We know Biden's a puppet of the WEF and the UN. We know that. And so, yes, reform the government. Yes, cut it way down. Yes, deal with it. But do not believe that your enemy is the government. We should be violent. And I know most of you get that, but people are pissed. And I'm not saying under common law, under the Declaration of Independence, we don't have a right to, to, to stand up and fight. No, no, I mean, we do at this point. They've given us poison shots. They rolled out a bioweapon gain of function. They're cutting children's genitals off. They are doing all of this to incite us into a revolution. The violence is not the answer. And for all of you that want it, you may get it. But we have to work so hard right now, in my view, to not do that and break the back of the censors and take information like this and get out to everybody you know. We're building a pro-human future. The globalists are building a post-human future. What does Yuval Noah Harari, the high priest of the WF, say? He says the future is not human. Well, I say the future is human, but we have to decide it's human. I lost friends. I lost family to the COVID attack. I've lost people that took the shot. We know what they did. It's a Holocaust and it's terrible. But we can't let them divide and conquer us and make it about Christian or Muslim or Jew. Yeah, we all have our differences. We can all debate those things. But we are being attacked by the same anti-human evil force that seeks to destroy us. And it's just that simple. We have to take the high road. And, and look, I know you're doing that. And I commend you for doing that. But I'm begging you all to pray to God and ask God to lead God and direct us. And through that process of seeking God and, and repenting, myself included, and saying, I'm sorry, and I want to be better, and reaching out to God and, and saying that prayer, it will open our mind up to God and to the universe, and we will go in the right direction. Now, that said, they're cutting off our energy. We're going into a depression. Times are going to be really, really hard. Things are going to get more and more intense. So spend time with your family and get right with God and spend every day you can and every moment you can promoting freedom and promoting liberty and discrediting the globalist and exposing them, but then offering the alternative of what America's promise was. America is the best house in a bad neighborhood. We're not perfect, but compared to other countries, we're the best. And it's because of the ethos we had, the Christian ethos, the Renaissance ethos, and, 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 and building this new system. So I'm extremely honored to be here. I'm extremely blessed to be able to talk to you. And I'm very, very thankful that all of you have sponsored us. You're our sponsors, if you're our listeners to bring us to this point. We couldn't do it without you, but now, the crucial 
part of the battle is coming, the crucible. The real heart of the war is now. And we can't do this without God. So I go back to that again and again and again. So to those that are already awake, thank you. And I commend you and I salute you. For those on the fence, you know where we're going is wrong. You know you've been lied to. You know we have a deep state. You know we have tyranny. You know they're coming after the children. You know these people are divorced from God. And the only way you're going to be fulfilled and empowered is to admit that to yourself. So, Owen Schroer is about to take over. We've got some huge guests today. I'm going to take a few days off with family to recharge and refocus. I'll be working behind the scenes. I'll be popping on the show as well. For myself and the whole crew, again, I just want to thank you one more time for your support. I just ask you to be the Paul Revere's. You know you are now. And I see you doing it. You're an incredible job. Take the live show and share it. Take the articles and share them. Go to Infowars.com. Take clips out of the show. Upload them everywhere. Because we've been vindicated and humanity is awakening right now. This is the crossroads. Thank you. God bless. And good luck. Okay. You know it. Time for that shirt off sermon. <laughs> After those burpees, man. 130 burpees. Seven rounds of shadow. Thank you, Boss Rootin'. Makes me want to speak my heart. Makes me want to preach on, brother. <laughs> Look, all I got to say is this. I got another day on this planet where I have the opportunity, not the obligation, to do anaerobic cardio that makes me want to throw up, makes me want to forget my name. That's a beautiful gift. That's a privilege for me to be able to abuse myself like that. It's a privilege for me to wake up early. It's a privilege for me to get stressed out. It's a privilege to be hated on. It's a privilege because it means I got a purpose and I have a meaning. So I'm giving thanks and gratitude to this beautiful world, to another day full of challenges, and to the fact that we're all one and we're all together, all right? Big love. Did everybody get a good look at that video? Hope so. All right, so I thought that was a good way to start off this video. I received a message in my meditation today and um, I'm gonna go ahead and share it with you. I have some notes in front of me and it is about um, timeline splits and sort of happening within um, a span of two years. You know, time is fluid. So, you know, about a two year process and um, this talk will include the Great Solar Flash, a little bit, a little something on the Great Solar Flash um, and AI. And of course, always our reflections. That's always what it's all about, really. So we have an election coming up, right, in less than two years. And the only reason I'm bringing that up is to sort of, you know, um, uh, show off the coincidence, but there are no such thing as coincidences, really, to, to sort of display the coincidence. And, but what, what I wanna, the attention that I kinda wanna bring to that is that there isn't a timeline shift because there is an election, um, okay? Um, there is an election because there is a timeline split. <laughs> so, not the other way around, okay? Um, there's an election because there's a timeline split, all right? Is that making sense? There's not a timeline split because there's an election. <laughs> so now the election really has nothing to do with the outcome of the timeline split. It has nothing, 100% nothing to do. It is only a byproduct of which timeline you're on. Now, I have good news for you. It doesn't matter how the election turns out. 99.9999% of the people watching this video are bottlenecked into the 5D timeline. This is not a discussion. This is not what this video is about. You know, are we making it onto the 5D timeline? Are we not? You are. You know, I, I, you know, there may be, you know, that, you know, possibly 0.1% that stumbles upon this video has no idea what the hell this is about, what I'm talking about. 
And, you know, other than that, like I said, 99.9%, .9%, probably 99.9999999999% um, that watch this video, you're bottlenecked into the 5D timeline. So this is not a discussion of are you staying in the 3D or are you moving forward into the 5D? That's not what this is about. You're going to the 5D. Okay, why would you not be? You've already made the decision, right? You watch these videos like mine. You already made the decision. You don't want to go onto the AI timeline. Okay, I'm not saying AI is not a part of um, the 5D future. It's just not the boss. It's just not taking over. It's just not, you know... Um, we're in charge of it. Um, and um, and it's also not smarter than us <laughs> in the 5D. Right now, um, technically it is. But it's not smarter than us in the 5D. And, you know, so I want to make that clear. Um, but you've already made the decision, right? You don't want the, you don't want the AI timeline and all that stuff, it's, you don't want it. You're not into it, you don't want it. You've already made the choice. So you're on the 5D timeline. End of story there. So let's get into some more complicated things. Let's talk about all of the timelines, all of the timelines that are on the 5D path because it's time for you to expand your mind and stop doing the little thinking that the beginner spiritual people are doing. And, you know, the 5D splitting off from the 3D and there's, all, you know, two timelines, you know. And of course, I've discussed this. I've discussed this with you before in other videos, but we're going to tap into it a little more. Um, some of you are familiar with this kind of talk already. But, um, you know, there's a lot of newbies here, too. Um, you know, I'm climbing toward 9,000 followers, subscribers, whatever. And, um, you know, I'll be creeping towards 10,000, which is sort of a magic number for me because in big tech, that's when they would always take me off. When I reach 10,000, boom, they would knock me off. They would take away my account. So... It'll be interesting. I, I, I'm sure Rumble probably won't do it, but you know, it's 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 um, um, uh, it's sort of a milestone in my psyche. Um, anyway, that's a side story. Uh, so there are myriads of timelines headed to the five D. Myriads, and there is. One, of course, that is more direct, the direct line, as opposed to the one that goes this way and that way. And there are myriads of timelines. And eventually, they all end up in the 5D there. But there's a direct one as well. You saw um, Brian Rose, the man that this video clip started off with. If you can be like that, you have a more direct path. I'm going to keep it that simple. If you're going to bitch and complain and my life this and my life that, it's a fucking privilege that that person broke your heart. Okay, if you can live like that, you're in a direct path. Why is it a privilege? How'd you get so smart? Uh, I'm not smart. That's just what Well, how'd you get away from <laughs> How'd you get that? You know, if you look back at Solomon, Solomon said, whatsoever my heart desired, I kept not from me. So it was through his experiences that he got wisdom, not the fact that he prayed for it. Right. Okay. So with me, I, I have gone through so many experiences, being aware of what I was doing with, with, with conscious awareness yes. until an observation and observance and reasoning uh -huh. until I obtained my wisdom. What would you like? like shoes? Very, very, shoes? Would you like shoes? No shoes since 81, no pants since 82, and no shirt since 83. Now, what don't buy shoes or, or shirts for? You might want to get some pants. <laughs> Do you have any use for money? Uh, very, very, very little. But there are occasions I use it. Like uh, last year, I wanted to go to a uh, uh, homecoming for Grandma State University. I was I came here last February of uh, last year. From where? From from Grandma, Louisiana. Oh. And I wanted to go to that homecoming. 
So when I decided I wanted to go to the homecoming, then a hundred dollar bill filled in my hands, and a fifty dollar bill filled in my hand, and twenty dollar bills, and ten dollar bills, and five dollar bills, and I had that money. <laughs> so you know, when I if I, if so it, you're talking it, about your mind manifest. It, yeah. the, 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 the the need is manifested through through the through, uh, if it's a if it's for, had it had it not been for me, it would never would have manifested. Yeah, but that's I was a cool to way to live in the world that living by trust. Don't you understand the privilege of expanding? Okay, that is the possibly, arguably, the top law, the top, 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 top law of source of the universe. There's one thing that is a must. Growth and expansion. God says, I cannot have it any other way. That's what it has to be. It has to be that. And, 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 and I will have things happen, call it contrast, and we're gonna have those things um, happen. They'll happen through free will, and then they'll, it'll happen through separation of me, the illusion of separation, and being a little dumb and not knowing well enough, and creating karma, and having to fix it, reconcile it, and through that reconciliation comes expansion. And that's just a little bit of how that goes. You know, we can, we, I could talk, talk about that forever. Man was made to live in nature. That's right. And when man took on the mind of good and evil, he was put out of nature. That's right. You're saying and that. in order to go back into nature, mm -hmm. you must go through the flame, which purifies the mind of good and evil. That's right. And you must be cut away from all attachments by the sword. That's right. And then you're qualified to re-enter nature. That's right. That's the message. It's the simplest of the message. Now, the only thing about it, pain, the, the, the purifying process is pain. So you got to, you, you don't expect to go back into nature without having to endure something. You're going to have to be really sophisticated because although, yes, behave like Brian Rose, the man that we started off this video clip with, sure, but... You have to be sophisticated because you can't lie to yourself either, right? It has to be authentic. When you watch that video, don't you see the authenticity in him? I got another day on this planet where I have the opportunity, not the obligation, to do anaerobic cardio that makes me want to throw up, makes me want to forget my name. That's a beautiful gift. That's a privilege for me to be able to abuse myself like that. It's a privilege for me to wake up early it's a privilege for me to get stressed out. It's a privilege to be hated on. It's a privilege because it means I got a purpose and I have a meaning. So I'm giving thanks and gratitude to this beautiful world, to another day full of challenges, and to the fact that we're all one and we're all together, all right? Big love. So, shadow work is extremely important. You cannot deny your shadow all right, so I'm not asking you to deny your shadow and act like Brian Rose in denial of your shadow. He's not in denial of his shadow. He's probably done so much shadow work. So there's nothing to deny. And isn't that interesting? And these are the intricacies that I want to talk to you about and getting into the 5D. Isn't that interesting that... Sweeping your shadow under the rug also makes you not enter 5D or elongates the process. Here's an example. And so what I want to speak to in this video is about my experience personally in one of the Lemurian timelines where I belong to a group of people, kind of like what you could consider the Mayans, the way that there was a group of Mayans who had essentially raised their level of consciousness off of this dimensional playing field. And so we were so close in this one lifetime to being able to shift our collective vibration and therefore shift our consciousness onto such a more beautiful, uh, what you would consider golden age. And we didn't. And I carry, you know, in, I came into this lifetime still holding so much unpacked grief from that level of catastrophe in that specific lifetime. 
because what happened was we all shared a collective blind spot. So we can't really blame any one person. It's not like we can go, oh, Frank, you ruined it for all of us. But it was this collective blind spot of denied hate. And we all shared denied hate because we viewed it as lesser than. And we didn't want to look at the fact that we even embodied that, that we even carried that. And so what we ended up doing is manifesting what was denied within us rather than what our pure and very beautiful intentions were. So what would be the easiest way to take care of that? You, you know, look, if you need to curse someone out every so often, whatever. But if you're going to, if you're going to um, sort of almost harvest that and bottle that up for three weeks, for three months. This is what I call the beach ball effect. You know how much energy it takes to put a beach ball underwater? You take your selfish self, you take your angry self, you take your too good self, your not good enough self. For three years, for 30 years, that's a 30 year delay. That's one of those long timelines. So you gotta be really sophisticated because if you bottle that stuff up, that's a problem too. You can't just pretending to be like Brian Rose. You have to authentically be. Go ahead and, you know, curse a person out. You need to spit in someone's face today? <laughs> maybe, maybe. Um, and let that process just all reconcile itself out. Um, I mean, better that you don't spit in someone's face, but you know what I mean? If you, if you have that much darkness in you, it's got to come out is the point, okay? So I am not, you know, I don't want to make a habit of it, this unnecessary habit of it, but I, you know, it's not below me to occasionally use like, you know, a not so kind statement about I hate this or I hate that, you know, from could be to like, I hate, you know, Chinese food, um, to um, even I hate a person. But if it's sort of harvested inside me, you know, um, thankfully I can't really say that I hate a person. Um, I'll roll my eyes at a person. I'll, you know, um, I'll just be like, what a dummy, you know. Now some people say, well, isn't that judgment? Well, you know, kind of sort of for the moment in time, for the, for, the, for the split second, but you know, I didn't deny my shadow. Um, I didn't deny my disapproval, but is it living in me? Is it harvested in me? Is it swelling in me? No, because I have better things to do with my time, first of all, you know what I mean? So, And I'm so happy to say that, you know, personally, and, and, and I'm not saying this, you know, in, in a sort of a bragging way or anything like that. And hopefully, hopefully when I say it, I'm actually more a reflection of where a lot of you are going. But I, I, I do feel very often like Brian Rose. I mean, I have a different personality, don't get me wrong. And um, I have sort of, sort of, you know, some people, think of me as the tough love reader. Um, um, uh, I also have an affinity for, um, you know, with cause, with a cause of um, provocation and a sort of a roughness, a, a slight edginess that could just be perceived as a, as a harshness or a bitchiness sometimes. Um, but not necessarily. It all depends on the viewer. It all depends on, you know, some people live for that stuff. It all depends. It's not like a constitution. Actually, it is very related to how your resonance is. And you can tell they are like, I don't know, in a spiritual path or in a balance with themselves being coherent with what they are doing. This seems like, uh, oh, so I can be a bad person and 
even though transcend in a very good way? Yes. So let's talk about AI for a second because I'm glad that you have not chosen the AI timeline. Uh, but you kind of need to stop judging these people as well, these people that want to do this. You've seen in some of my videos, some of my readings, you've seen me talk about occasionally, if you missed it, well, I'm going to say it here, you know, how actually I feel bad for the Illuminati, how insecure do they have to be to do the things that they do? When people do things like that, it comes from insecurity. And by the way, don't you see the reflection? Don't you see when you want revenge from somebody, you know, re get, to get revenge on somebody or with somebody, whatever? Uh, don't you see your own insecurity in that? When you want to slash that person's tire? I just, you know, I'm just, I'm not saying that's what you want to do. I'm just giving examples here. Um, don't you see when in your mind's eye you are, you know, telling off somebody, which is fine. It means you're dealing with your shadow and we talked about that. Um, but are you doing that like every day? And for how long are you doing it for, you know? Um, how many minutes or hours a day? And then, you know, in what span of time? How many years have you been doing this? You know? So that eats away at you at the end of the day. Um, honor. Honor these people that want to do the AI that you don't want to do. They're what some people call your Zen masters. These are our true Zen masters. Before we get too carried away with demonizing these demons, and they are demons, let's remember that they are actually Zen masters. The evil they represent is the contrast against which we can now define our reason, define our Christed conscience, and act now as sons and daughters of God. That's the point. Back to Brian Rose. Those demons, I'm daring you to be grateful for them. They're teaching you what not to be. It's a privilege for me to get stressed out. It's a privilege to be hated on. It's a privilege because it means I got a purpose and I have a meaning. So I'm giving thanks and gratitude to this beautiful world, to another day full of challenges, and to the fact that we're all one and we're all together, all right? Big love. They're teaching you what not to be. I'm daring you to kind of love them, okay? It's an honor, it's a privilege to have, ha to have had my heart broken by that lover and that lover. And can you get there? Can you get there like genuinely? Because if you're if you can, and if you can't, it's okay. Because because if you can't, it is serving you. It is serving you and it is giving you the lesson that you need. And you'll get there when you get there. And don't fret over it and don't uh, be impatient because impatience actually delays more. It delays the whole process even more. So, so what if you have a slightly longer route? Go with it. Because the impatience of it will make it even longer. Honor yourself. Honor your journey. Honor these people's journey who want to do the AI route. Honor their journey too. They don't... And on one hand, I want to say that they don't know any better. And they don't. Certainly from my perspective, they don't. But at the same time, I have to admit, who am I to say? All I'm really here to say is that I know that I want to go on the 5D timeline, not the AI timeline. That's all that I know. And that's all that I need to know. I tend to believe that they don't know any better. I know this much. A lot of it comes from insecurity. Some of it doesn't. Some of it comes from their desire to explore. They too will make it to source one day. They, they just will. 
but they have a completely different route that is going very far away from source for a while before it learns something. Their path is serving them at the end of the day. But there's a lot of us who don't need any more of that type of path as well. And this is where the split is taking place. You know, AI and, mm -hmm. and, and computing advances that can make it possible to create robots that, that, that can actually emulate human capacities, such as emulating the brain itself, which is the uh, great project of the European Commission. They funded, they put a billion dollars into funding brain emulation software to all the capacity of the brain will be programmed into a, a single program that will emulate the human brain. So, I mean, this is really going far. But where is there a place for the greater field of intelligence, for the greater mind, the non-physical mind, right? Uh, yeah, right, which exactly. Which is intuition, which is soul, which is spirit. How does that factor in? And that's going to become the nature of this conversation. Yeah, that's where we want to go because most of the people that are doing this are, are materialists. They're reductionists. And, totally. And they don't really understand consciousness the way we do. Mm -mm. They see consciousness as an epiphenomenon of the brain. So if you can get the brain just right, then you can generate consciousness. So they think that if the software is, is good enough, then they'll generate a, a self-aware being. I mean, they're really serious about it, too. So the, 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 dark, uh, the, the darkness says, we're not interested in your version of evolution. We're interested in our freedom. Okay, now what is the, are you saying there's now, I'd like to find out, um, an, a, a knockdown effect from this particular new um, scientifically materialistic uh, transhuman movement, is that uh, from the Nodites? Is that from the Alum Illuminati? Do you think bloodline? Is it a continuation? It's manipulating whatever you can get your hands on. Mm -hmm. So if you can get your hands on the genes, manipulate that. Mm -hmm. If you can get your hands on on plows, manipulate that. Whatever it is. It's, it's, so it's, let's, it's, let's take your point of view on uh, philosophically, what's to gain now? I mean, obviously this is a loaded question. If you're of um, a materialistic viewpoint, and you now have the ability through money and science to begin manipulating DNA, manipulating intelligence. What, what's that end game? Uh, it looks pretty harsh because of the inequality we see on the planet. So obviously, you know, these characteristics will be given to powerful, wealthy people. The whole thing will be privatized. So and we'll including have, life extension, which is a part of extension. this. It's a big part of the agenda. Absolutely. But always. now, but you see, the thing that's interesting to me is if you have a viewpoint where um, life is essentially a physical vehicle that drops and that's it, there, there is every reason to try to do anything to extend life because there is no belief in anything that transcends life. So then you're getting into, it has to be atheistic, dr atheistic nature driving this then, right? You know, because of the great fear of death and losing the mortal physical vehicle. Right, because these guys are materialists. Yes. They want immortality, but they want, don't, they want to win it not through sort of consciousness means, right. but through material means. So, I, you know, I sympathize because these people don't know any better. Mm -hmm. uh, and they do have access to technologies that can maybe do this. Mm -hmm. Maybe so. Maybe it's true. Maybe we can extend life 100 years. We're naturally extending life anyway because of uh, developments that are occurring. I mean, this is a great period of change. The frequencies have changed about us. Naturally, we, life extension has doubled in 100 years. So exactly. It's already, so no reason it shouldn't happen why again. Can, you know, we get technology and better food, whatever, nutrition. Kurzweil is this guy that's big on nutrition and everything, anything, because he doesn't believe in an afterlife. Yes. So, so this is a big issue. This so is a big issue. If you don't have a cosmology that is spiritual, you know, I, I, I'm sympathetic. I mean, if you really believe you're, that you're going to be snuffed out, then yeah, you try to find a tool to make yourself, you know, or maybe cryogenics or something mm -hmm. like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, Timothy Leary, I think, mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, you, you can imagine that people, so, this is fine. These are technology people. They can do what they're doing. Mm -hmm. What we have to do is we have to give this context and we have to bring theory, you know, evolutionary theory and theology and cosmology yes. that's, that's based on consciousness. On that note, thank you so much, Byron. Now, the split has already taken place. You're, you're bottlenecked into the 5D timeline. 
And I'm going to get into specifics in a second about the timelines and how it is that you are on the one you're on. I'm going to get even more specific. But first I was getting into... If you want to try to get onto the more direct one, how do you do that? And it comes from appreciativeness and gratefulness. And I know that sounds so cliche. We hear it in all the Abraham Hicks videos, blah, 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 blah. But one, it's the truth. And two, this is something that's becoming more of an inner standing to people, which is fantastic. And hopefully this video becomes uh, more helpful um, in that expanding inner standing that is taking place for people. So yeah, you know, uh, I feel bad for the Illuminati and um, how uh, desperate they are and how insecure they are, okay? Um, there are a few exceptions where it's less about insecurity and a little bit about more personal exploration. You have to honor that. And nothing negative that they do can touch you if you know thyself. That's just the truth. If you think it's powerful to be the creator of your reality, imagine being so powerful that the whole universe bends over backwards to create your reality for you. In a sense, it's as if the universe is your servant because you're the creator of it all. You're the center of it all. That's what non-doership is. That's what surrender is. You're surrendering to a much greater power. And yeah, you're going to have to feel like you're giving up control. You're going to have to feel like you're giving up power. But it's never true on the other side, right? You never say, man, it sure sucked. I had to give up my control. But it is nice and peaceful to not be in control. You say, wow, I can't believe I, be I thought I was in control. <laughs> I can't believe I was so blind that I thought I was making the gears of reality turn. What a delusion I was stuck in. I'm so grateful God showed me I'm the non-doer and God is the all-doer. These people that want the AI timeline, a lot of them don't believe in source. A lot of them are atheists. Atheists. Some of them aren't. They just don't want that. They just don't want the organic timeline. They just don't. We have to honor that. We don't have to go with them, but we have to honor that. And if you're busy judging, you're closer to their timeline because you're mimicking their energy. It's a reflection of their energy. They're judging. They think there's too much of you. They're insecure about it. They're annoyed with you. You're annoyed with them. They are afraid of death. A lot of you are overcoming that. So that is no longer or at least not for very long anymore, a reflection of you. If some of you are afraid of death, then it's a natural thing, but you're going to have to get over it. Like you, they want to live forever. You have a lot of similarities, guys. That's what I'm trying to tell you. What's so bad about them? They don't want to do it the way you want to do it. You don't want to do it the way they want to do it. But what's so bad about them? trying to figure out their shit and their escape of death through machine. And the way, the reason I phrase it that way, what's so bad about them, because it's only the same, it's only just as bad as it is about you wanting so bad to have a great solar flash. Your desperations match. And I hate to say, I'm not trying to, I, I'm actually not trying to play devil's advocate or anything when I say this next line, but the ones who want it the most are the ones who probably are most distant from a great solar flash. To me, a great solar flash is a little bit more of, um, for most people, this is going to be a gradual process in general, the moving forth into the 5D. But there there can be some people that have a more, what could be looked at as instantaneous transition um, into the 5D. Um, it 
If you want my honesty, it's not a lot of people. I don't know who they are. More power to you if you disagree with me because maybe you're saying, hell no, I'm doing the great solar flash. If that's true, good on you. But I would say also be genuine with that statement too because if you're actually saying it with the resonance of, if you're saying it with the resonance of, I'm desperate for the great solar flash, then you're probably not. In fact, I'm sure you're not one of those people. So be careful about that. You know where the people that do the great solar flash are probably people like Brian Rose and him understanding that everything is a privilege. Those are the people. So, newsflash, every version of you exists, including the version of you that stays on the 3D timeline. I don't believe that you will be staying on the 3D timeline, but I also can't ensure how short your trip to 5D is. Only you can ensure that. Before an event is observed, it's said to exist in a superposition of quantum states. In the example of you making an investment decision, before you make it, both and multiple possibilities exist. After you make it, one possibility is experienced and observed. Now the question becomes, how can we influence the reality that we most would like to observe? That's where identity shifting comes into play. Mythology is always referring to archetypal themes and the archetypes that are being played out within the soul and the psyche. And the soul is the one that is experiencing itself as these archetypes. And however strongly a myth has been preserved and significant to the collective psyche, is showing how relevant that mythology is to the soul's journey. So your soul has many avatars of you running around on various timelines, including the 3D one, even though you won't be going there. But you kind of are there because you literally have all these avatars running around experiencing things. Solomon said, whatsoever my heart desired, I kept not from me. So it was through his experiences that he got wisdom, not the fact that he prayed for it. Why is it that you're conscious about this one right now? and not the other ones. Why is that? And I'm gonna tell you why. You can think of your soul in a room, and do you remember a long, long time ago, the way they used to do like little moving pictures, like, you know, I don't know, was this the 20s or 30s? They would have those lenses, you would look into the lens, and sometimes they would have, um, that's how they would do like, um, um, like, kind of what porn was at the time, but it could be a cartoon. It could be pinup girls that people were looking at. You would put like a, you put like a penny into the, into the slot and you would look into the machine and you would see a movie. In fact, let's update and let's just call it iPhones or Androids. And let's say your soul is in this room and there are all these tablets with the different movie scene going on of all its different avatars that it put out there to experience, to grow, to expand, to feel. The avatars are feelers, thus expanders. The one you're aware of now, self-aware of now, because you're not aware of the other ones, they're all there though, including your 3D one, including, yeah, including your 3D one. Let's keep it simple. I was going to go somewhere else with that, but let's just keep it simple. Including your 3D one, your many 3D ones, just as there are many 5D ones. Hopefully this video inspires you to get on the more direct 5D line because there are many. The one you're focused on right now, the one you're self-aware of right now is the one that your soul is looking into that lens with or the iPhone or tablet that your soul is looking at and watching the movie that you're acting in. It could look at any one of them, all the timelines. Why is it this one? Why? What's it about this one? 
The reason it's this one it's looking at, and that's the one you're self-aware of, is because that's the one that has the relevant expansion. That's the one that has relevant expansion. Relative to the now, to the here and now. Okay? But your soul can go on to look onto another iPhone or another tablet and see a different movie. It would all depend on how you're playing out your role in this movie. And how you're playing out your role partly has to do, not partly, it almost totally has to do with the choices you make in life. And in fact, this is why tarot and things like that can be super limited. And it's more limited than ever now, actually, because of the fact that you are becoming aware and awake. And because you're becoming aware and awake, you are no longer really making choices that are pattern-esque. You are no longer making choices that are routine. Whether you realize it or not, you're quite switching it up. So it can be more difficult for psychics to do their work, but that's actually part of the whole idea of 5D is that everybody's psychic, nobody's gonna need a psychic, everyone's gonna be able to read each other's mind, literally. However, even back in the day when people were less awake, thus more predictable because they were more routine-esque, they weren't self-aware, they weren't so conscious where they could, where they really thought so deeply um, about paths that they wanted to take and how it would enrich them or not enrich them. Um, even then was information from psychics limited because your free will cannot be played with. You ultimately have to make the choice at the end of the day. You ultimately have to make it, ultimately. Everything is resonance. So depending on the resonance, it's 222 two, two on the clock, interestingly enough. Depending on the resonance, that would say what information some people can receive. Because yes, it is true that some people did receive the more straight up information. No, do not go into that relationship. You know, while others would not necessarily receive that information. They would only receive information up to a point to then make the decision. Also, sometimes it didn't matter. Sometimes you can tell you, they were allowed to receive the information, don't go into that relationship, and they would go into it anyway. Source knows what information to give. Source knows what's okay to give without screwing up your free will. You know, in some cases it might say, ah, go ahead and tell them not to get into the relationship because they're gonna anyway. You know, but it doesn't tell you to not get into it because it's telling you what to do. It will never tell you what to do. Um, it can't do that. Uh, you must make your choices organically. So there is a level of almost psychology that source itself uses when um, readings are taking place and psychic readings and future telling, da 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 da. Some of that is fine. Um, um, well, it will, it, it's all fine because it will never say anything it's not it, that, that messes with your free will or that it shouldn't um, at the end of the day, not ultimately. Um, so it's all fine. Um, um, But the way it's able to do that, or psychics are able to do that, is simply because it's your vibration. So, so all a reader is doing is reading your vibration, and it's 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 very it's it's very obvious um, which direction um, um, 
you know, if your vibration is headed this way, then it's very easy for the reader to tell this is where you're going to go. <laughs> um, you know, uh, when you become more sophisticated at that, you can do it yourself. You don't even need to go to a reader. We don't listen to our own truths. What this shift of consciousness is about is this internal guidance system is now becoming the compass that's driving you. Absolutely. Although it is hard to self-examine, it is a little easier. This is why Source did this and gave the illusion of separation, because it is a little easier to have um, someone that you think is not you kind of looking at you from the outside, from that illusion of separation. It is easier to have someone bounce off, you know, information off. You know what I mean? Um, so it's a fantastic illusion. Uh, but it is all you at the end of the day. Me talking to you is you, is a version of you. Uh, but some of you will become so sophisticated that you won't even need that. You'll be able to do it yourself. Aren't some of you great at giving people advice, but you can't give it to yourself? It's a little like that. And when you are able to do it yourself more and more and more, that's sort of an analogy for the oneness. Doesn't mean you should stop hanging out with people or anything, um, but that's an analogy for the oneness. You've got all the answers yourself. And it makes you more privy to this illusion that there's anything separate from you. Reality is here to be our mirror, right? So if I truly believe that source is infinite supply, then I should have that demonstrated in my life, right? I shouldn't have lack or scarcity in my life if I know that source is infinite abundance and omnipresent. So why should I put up with lack anymore? The source is perfect wholeness, perfect health, perfect life without a shadow at all. Practicing oneness should be really our only true spiritual practice that we need to remember the truth in any situation of who we really are and to close our eyes to the world of lack, the world of form and materiality, and bask and bathe in the truth of oneness, in the truth of who God is in us here and now. So be mindful of your resonance. Don't worry about other people's resonance too much. I would say don't worry about other people's resonance at all. Because you would be surprised in some cases, in some cases, there can be things that appear bad. Can appear bad. And yet, it will not take them off the 5D timeline. This is possible. Because it doesn't matter what it appears like on the outside. The lines blur because sometimes a moral action in one situation may not be a moral action in another. And that is absolutely correct. When we talk about the lines blurring between what is moral in any given situation, that is now in the realm of Dharma. So watch my video on Dharma to understand when what's bad or wrong actions are actually the most aligned and correct actions to take. There are people that have done bad things for with other people being coherent with what they are doing. This seems like, uh, oh, so I can be a bad person and even though transcend in a very good way? Yes, because there's no God that judges us. I don't know, well, if you believe in something like that, it will happen. But actually, it's all about resonance. So it's about in which level of consciousness you are you are resonating. Um, the thing is, I'm trying to summarize how the system would, <laughs> would work. For example, when you do very bad things to others, the weight of others blaming you is a very deep weight of energy that pushes you to the, to the matter again. So when you die, you probably will find trapped in the link of a network related to all the souls that you affected. So even if you feel that you are high vibrational, um, you will have to deal with that. So you will have to start trying to work 
to heal those links and find these people in every life that you come back trying to to heal those links that you have created. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so basically it's much work. <laughs> um, so when you create chaos in other people's lives, eventually you will have to create order in those people's lives. It depends actually on which level of resonance you live in, which level of coherence, because there is a lot of people that work for spirituality that they actually resonate in a very low level. Like people that are meditating all the time, whatever, but um, actually they are all the time sad and dark and uh, they, they are not improving, they cannot do anything. They are, I don't know, 15 years doing the same thing all the time. So that's a low vibration. So it doesn't matter how good person they are, how good people they can become. Uh, what happened after that will be in the same level as they were the whole life. So sometimes people that create bad things evolve faster than people that they think they are doing the good things. It's all about resonance. Because maybe that, people, that person that did bad things found a way to solve the problems faster than the people that is meditating all day. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very complicated. It, there's no a right answer for if I do bad things, where do I go or how it is? Because there's no one really controlling that. Like, <laughs> it's, it's basically like resonance. You, you will match with what you are resonating. And a resonance you want to make sure that you keep is really quite simple. Generally, you can't go wrong with integrity. And if you're busy judging, that's going to be a problem. Now, if listen, if you're playing out your shadow and um, you need a bitch slap someone today, that's fine. I get it, you know, or source gets it. Um, you know, it happens. We're not, you know, we can't deny these shadows. Uh, but if you live in them, if you, what's the word I want to use? I said harvest a few times, but if you just let it, you know, um, um, stagnate in you and live in you, that's where the problem is. Okay. If you want to say fuck you to the Illuminati today, great. Other than that, leave them alone because if you are not in resonance with them, I don't care what they're doing. They cannot do anything to you. You have to believe in your divinity and your divine protection. Because if you don't believe it, well, then you won't be divinely protected because you get what you believe. There's no God that judges us. Well, if you believe in something like that, it will happen. You have to believe in your divinity and your divine protection. And if you don't believe it, you have no reason to behave more often like Brian Rose. Because it's, it really is that type of gratefulness, graciousness, appreciation that really gets us onto the more direct timeline. I repeat, do not use 20, whatever 2024's election looks like. Do not use that as your excuse to lower your resonance. Understand that exactly whatever happens there is serving you. These evil people are your Zen masters. I'm sorry, be grateful for them. Some of you are just not really gonna understand that. Whatever happens with the 2024 election, now here's the tricky thing about it though. Here's the thing, because you're all on a different timeline. You don't realize that. You want people like me to make some solid prediction about it when it's not possible because as you guys become more individual, more sovereign, less predictable because you're making conscious decisions in a way you never have before, you're literally all going to experience 2024 differently and for some of you quite differently some it could be the most simplest thing where trump wins and that's the end for other people it could be that um um it's stolen but 
victory happens anyway because of this and that and the other thing. Um, it could be that the nominations are taken away from Trump and RFK Jr. and their merging is a success. And it's the first time an independent president um, wins an election. Well, the first time since George Washington because he technically had no party. It's the only one that was independent. Interesting, huh? Um, uh, you know, it, it, I'm not, I'm, these are not predictions. They've already happened. Which one are you on? And I'm not asking you so much to choose because sometimes you're choosing and your, um, your declaration, the true resonance of it is desperation and I wish for this timeline. Be grateful for whatever timeline you're at. It's serving you. It's serving your expansion. And do not assume that whatever the election... Don't assume that because Trump won, you're on the on the on the short version of the 5D timeline. You may not. That could be a hellish presidency. But don't assume that it's a hellish presidency either. Don't assume anything. Whatever you see on the outside is going to be more of a reflection of what's happening inside of you. It really is that simple. While there was a wonderful 2016 timeline shift, one of the fails that ended up happening was that it, it sort of became worship. You put a man in office to represent you. You're the boss. All of a sudden, it became... You're my savior. Do it for us, Trump. God put you in office. All these Christians, you know. God put you in office. You're the savior. You're the, you know. I mean, you literally had people saying that. You're the 5D. You're the angelic. You're, you know. You forgot who's the boss. And that everything's a reflection of you. And as you were weak inside, everything was weak outside. Now, is that every single one of you? No, not necessarily. But, you know, you are playing out uh, roles with people, though. And that's why you may experience it um, somewhat like them, even though you didn't necessarily actually give your power away. But some of you damn well know that you did. But as time goes on, the timelines, and I'm not just talking about, like I said before, I'm not just talking about the 3D and the 5D. As time goes on, the all of your guys' separate timelines are going to start looking even more and more radically different. And it will be an illusion that you're all sharing this timeline, um, this one particular timeline. Um... But in reality, you've broken off from other people that are experiencing another timeline. So this is something that a lot of you are not going to... It can't even be proved. It can't even be proved because how do you prove something that, you know, you're not on that other timeline. How can you prove that there is another timeline? But what I'm suggesting to you is that timelines are going to start getting radically different. Look, there are some people that that's 2016 timeline went beautifully. Beautifully. There's some there's some avatars there living that out. But in order for you to jump to that avatar where 2016 came out beautifully, you have to obtain the knowledge here and now that that avatar has. In other words, you have to be in resonance. And that's how you become that timeline. You see, everything that you are experiencing now 
will result in this byproduct that is a more harmonious, also expanded, incredible version of yourself. That's what the byproduct will be. So right now, one of the things we're learning to do is how, how to become that byproduct quicker is all. It's probably gonna start getting easier for a lot of you. I think a lot of you are slowly really starting to understand this or rather understand this. Speaking of getting onto timelines fast, may I remind you, you've probably heard me say it a thousand times, you know, there's a version of you that everything went beautiful in 2016. You're trying to align, you're trying to, you're trying to get into that resonance a little bit more. I'm just using that as an example. If you can let go of the people that you swear that you love and let them have their experience, if you can do that, because if, as you don't, as, as you, as you protest and resist them having their experience, you elongate your timeline when you could just move faster and meet the 5D version of them. And that 5D version of them only exists because they were allowed to do all of the screwy things they did, including get the vaccine, that eventually led them to being the 5D byproduct. There's nothing that you will do unless they want it. And we know often they don't. There's nothing that you can do to take them to 5D with you. Why not? They can't be of resonance. You cannot change their resonance. You can only assist them if they want it. Some, sometimes we do get that. We do get people that says, teach me. You know, Jesus had all his followers, disciples. They were ready for that. Okay? You cannot make someone be your follower, your disciple, your um, your sort of comrade in that whole thing. Um, you know, you can't make someone do that. The quickest way for them to either come onto your side is by allowing them to, ha to have their experience so that they can gain all of the wisdom that they need to be of resonance on your side. And it can happen in a number of ways. For some of you, it is a little what you would perceive as easier. All of this is perception. This is all a big illusion. You would perceive it as easier. Some of you would consider yourself lucky because sometimes, yes, you know, maybe certain disasters like what happened with the FBI recently, maybe some of them do come to you and say, you know what, I gotta rethink everything. And I know you know a lot of things, so help me. Some of you do get that. Uh, some of you don't. Some of you, you know, some of you will just not get that. <laughs> but if you can move on from that, you will get that. Um, obviously this is a more elongated process at this point. Well, you get to the 5D first, Okay, you're not really leaving them behind. That's an illusion. You're honoring them. You're loving them. It's actually the opposite of leaving them behind. You're honoring them. And you've let them go. You have to, you're not in charge of them anyway. You're not really, that's all, that would be all a facade. Because even if you did have some sort of level of control over them, the way parents think that they can just control their kids, You can influence them in a positive way, but actually control, you can't control anybody. Their resonance is their resonance and that's that. <laughs> so if you can, if you can, similar to the judgment and the anger and all that kind of stuff that we talked about, that if you harvest the need for them to come with you, well, that's all you're harvesting is need. Need, 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 need. I just saw 1414. 
and that's 5, 5, and that's 10, which brings it back to 1. Um, what's that harvest? Weight, density. It makes you not so light. It makes you not so enlightened. It slows down the building of your Merkaba. <laughs> Because those are things that will literally be turning on when we get to the 5D. The Great Solar Flash, I'll end with this. The Great Solar Flash is an individual experience. The Flash can be different for everybody. Uh, I don't believe that everyone will be experiencing the Flash. I think people will be experiencing it more in progression. Although I do think that even people who will experience the Solar Flash will have progression too. In other words, there will be progression up to a point and then a flash. Um, I think that most people will, it will only just be a progression. So in other words, it'll kind of be more like um, they will pass or die. There's no such thing as death. Die, reincarnate, and continue the progression that way into 5D. And then for other people, um, uh, there will be some people that will be, in essence, flashed over but it is an individual experience and some people may experience that in 2024 you know um i don't know who i don't even know if it's me it could be i've gotten dates um that had to do i think it was between 2023 and 2024 if i remember correctly um i was talking about it for a little while i stopped because i kind of got this message that that's not for you to you can share it, but that's not really why it was told to you. It was told for you, they told me. Not for me that that's exactly when it was going to happen, but more like that's a potential for you. If you keep a resonance, you know, if you keep a resonance. Um, um, you know, I interviewed um, Ismael Perez. I um don't agree with a lot of things he says, but it's not because he's wrong. He's got his own timeline. Everyone has an individual timeline. He's got his own thing going on that could or may not be associated with a great solar flash around the same time. I was very curious because the dates were similar. At best, I think that the discussion and me just talking about it just alone on video. In general, this type of discussion has to do more with the potential that people have as opposed to an actual date. And you can achieve that potential um, or not. And really, if this is all a big illusion. It's not a big deal if you don't. Some of you are here for the journey. Some of you are like, I don't want no great solar flash. I'm having a great time. This is quite a show. And of course, of course, the irony is that the people who don't want it usually just get the great solar flash because they're in resonance with 5D so much, like the Brian Rose video at the start of this video, that it's just like, bro, you're resonating there. That's where you're going to be. So it's the people that don't want it that much, that don't really give a rip, that always get it. That's so interesting. So I'll leave you with that. You can't control how people receive your energy. That's going to be filtered through the lens of whatever they're going through at that moment, which is not about you. You just keep doing your thing with as much integrity and love as possible. Paradox means what was true just a minute ago may not be true right now. Mm -hmm. So in the fourth dimension, you get to get out of many of those restricted, non-flexible structures. So she shows up at your door 20 years later and you say, oh, I remember you, you were the bad one. But what they may have done is showed up at your doorstep to say, I'm so sorry for what I did 20 years ago. So if you can have flexibility, you begin to change your reality. Basically, not even the divine is being, we think like, oh, the divine is being so selfless. No, the divine is just, being really good vibes and that's why they're in the frequency to forgive does that make sense yeah there there is no charity in this universe be okay with yourself be okay with what's happening be okay with what is 
as soon as you are okay with what is happening, what is happening will change. Be okay with yourself. Be okay with what's happening. Be okay with what is. As soon as you are okay with what is happening, what is happening will change. Be okay with yourself. Be okay with what's happening. Be okay with what is. As soon as you are okay with what is happening, what is happening will change. Happening will change.